The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife Harriet as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson, and his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Did you lose something? Hmm? Oh, no, I'm sure I haven't lost it. What's that? Oh, well, this is a bracelet. I bought it about yeah, six yeah, months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know what that is. I mean, uh, what is it you've lost? Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you lost the car keys again. I resent that. You're the one who's always losing the car keys. Are you kidding? I've never lost the car keys in my life. Come on, stop changing the subject. What is it you've lost? Or, or uh, that you haven't lost, but you're looking for? Well, let me go further. I may find it yet. Well, for goodness sakes, why don't you want to tell me? Well, if you must know, it's because you'll insist it's some Freudian thing, and I've lost it because subconsciously I don't like it. In other words, it's something I gave you. Well, yes, but I didn't lose it because I don't like it. I'm not even sure I've lost it yet. Now, wait a minute. Could it be the, the gold pin? What gold pin? You know, uh, the gold pin I gave you for our 13th wedding anniversary. The one with the big 13. The one you never wear. How did you guess? Did you find it? <laughs> no. Why, did you lose it? Well, it was what I was looking for. How did you guess? Well, uh, uh, there is a lot to this Freudian business. I mean, you do have a tendency to lose the things that you don't like. Well, now, what makes you think I don't like it? Uh, well, you never wear it. But I like it. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I just thought it was kind of a clever idea. I mean, our 13th wedding anniversary and then the pin with the 13 on it. Well, is. yes, it was. It was a very clever idea, and I used to wear it a great deal. Well, you know how superstitious some people are, and I always had the feeling that they were shying away from me when I wore it. Oh. Besides, it was very hard to find an occasion to wear it. Well, uh, why, I don't know. A pin like that could be worn on the, on the 13th of every month. That's uh, very uh, appropriate. Or you could take it and turn it upside down and wear it on the 31st. It must be around here something. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you have lost it, it's insured. Uh, I know I haven't lost it. Oh, I... I uh, where are the boys? Maybe they've seen it. I'm sure I haven't lost it. Yeah, well, yes, I, I know. I say, uh, where are the boys? Oh, they're downstairs in the living room. I asked them to go see if I'd lost it down there. Oh. Oh, uh, but... Uh, but you, you haven't lost it. in the couch and I'll look under the cushions in the chairs. You look under the cushions in the couch and I'll look under the cushions in the chairs. And what difference does it make? Plenty. Pop always sits in the chairs. So what? Sometimes money falls out of his pockets. <laughs> We're not looking for money, Ricky. We're looking for Mom's pin. If I did happen to find some money, do you think I could keep it? It wouldn't be very honest. What should I do? Just do the honest thing. Split 50-50 with me. <laughs> But you got to split 50-50 with me, too. Come on, just start looking. Hey, David, do we split 50-50 on everything we find? Sure. Wow, well, congratulations, my boy. You've now just become half owner of a green button. Keep it. I feel in my generous mood today. Oh, my God. Is Mother and Dad home? Yes, sir. Come right in. Thank you. Would you tell them the claim investigator is here? Holy smokes, a real live investigator? <laughs> well, I, I seem to be alive, but I'm afraid I'm not the kind of investigator you're thinking of. 
I don't carry a gun. I've never been sapped with a blackjack. I'm just an insurance claim investigator. I just go around and listen to a lot of tall stories. Who is it, Rick? It's the man from the insurance company. He's here to listen to a lot of tall stories. <laughs> Nelson? Oh, uh, yes? My name is Matthews, Mr. Oh, Nelson. Oh, how do you do? Come right in and sit down, Mr. Matthews. Thank you. Oh, uh, this is my wife, the gentleman from the insurance company. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Won't you sit down? Matthews, Thank you. Is, uh, very quick service. Well, we, we try to straighten these things out as promptly as possible. Now, as I understand it, this is a case of mysterious disappearance. Yes, uh, that's right. The, the pin just disappeared. We can't find it anywhere. I see. Well, we'll have to fill out a claim. I have a description of the pin from the policy. A large, round gold pin with a large number 13 in the center. Uh, yes, that, that's right. It was a, a gift I gave to Mrs. Nelson for our 13th wedding anniversary. I designed it myself. Oh, congratulations. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. That's I, been I quite a few years ago, though. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I see. Well, now, when did you first notice the pin was missing, Mrs. Nelson? Oh, it was a couple of days ago. Uh, uh, she evidently noticed it was missing a couple of days ago, but just this morning, uh, I, I came into our, our bedroom and I saw that Mrs. Nelson was uh, searching for something. And uh, uh, I don't know, uh, somehow I, I got the idea that she might have lost th this uh, particular uh, 13th anniversary uh, pin. And, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, sure enough, she had. That's interesting. Well, when you first noticed the loss, did you notify the police? Oh, no. No, no, we, we, no. Uh, who'd want to, uh, I mean, uh, no, we, we didn't figure anybody had stolen it. We, we figured that uh, Mrs. Nelson had just uh, misplaced it. Do you often misplace things of value, Mrs. Nelson? <laughs> no, just this pen. Uh, no, 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 she, she doesn't uh, make a, a habit of, of uh, misplacing valuable things. Then uh, uh, this pen has a, a great sentimental value, naturally, being a, an anniversary gift. Uh, I, I paid $125 for it. I see. And that's why we're not interested in the money, uh, of course. It's the, uh, the, uh, the, the sentimental uh, value of the... Uh, it's $125. That's <laughs> the, the principle of the thing. I mean, you can't actually measure uh, sentiment in terms of money. I paid uh, $125 for it. I made a note of that the first time you mentioned it. <laughs> now I... Uh... I have your assurance that the pin was lost through inadvertence and you've made every reasonable effort to locate it. Uh, uh, every, oh, yes, we turned the place upside down. Uh, every, every reasonable. Well, it seems like a simple matter. I'll just okay the claim and you'll get your check in the mail tomorrow. Oh, that's... Uh, Say, there seems to be one little uh, discrepancy here. Oh, what's that? According to the files at our office, our appraiser values the pin at $150. <laughs> well, we'll send you a check in the mail tomorrow. Good night. Good night, Mr. Good night. What's that? There's nothing here for me. Oh, were you expecting something? Yeah, I was expecting a birthday party invitation. Oh, who from? Well, I don't know, but I pass the word around school that I always give good birthday presents. <laughs> well, then you'll be luckier tomorrow morning. Oh, say, here's a letter from the insurance company. Well, that's quick action. Sure is. There's a check. Ooh, for $125. Mm -hmm. I wonder why they made it out to both of us. Oh, yeah, Ozzie and Harriet Nelson. Well, that's probably just some technicality of some sort. Well, here, do you want to endorse it, and then I'll take it down the bank and cash it, and then I'll go over to the jewelry store and have them make up another pin just like the one you lost. Oh. Well, what, don't you want another pin? Well, it wouldn't be the same. Well, sure, I'll have it made up exactly the same. Oh, but I'd know the difference. Well, okay, I have a better idea. You know the little place in the middle where we have the 13? Why don't I have that made removable, you see? And then each year we can put... No, you don't. You're not going to get out of buying me an anniversary present. There are too many things I need. <laughs> well, if that's the way you feel here, just endorse the check and we'll deposit in my account. Oh, I have a better idea. Why don't you just endorse it, but give it to me? After all, the pin belonged to me, so the money's rightfully mine. Here you are, Dick. <laughs> no, no, not so fast. It's true I did give you the pin, and it was yours while you had it. But after all, you lost the pin, which I had paid $125 for. So since you no longer have the pin, 
and the money was sent over here to replace the pin, then the check is obviously rightfully mine. There must be a hole in that someplace. No, 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 not at all. Let's approach this thing legally and look at the various uh, equities involved here. Now, to wit, I purchased a pin for $125 and gave the pin to you. Thence you enjoyed usage of said pin for several years. Thence you lost said pin. Thence the company returned my money. Hence the uh, check and the, the money uh, belongs to me uh, 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 henceforth. Would you mind repeating that again? <laughs> Cut out the stalling now. Here's the pen. You have the check. Just sign it. No. I don't know very much about law, and I don't think it's ethical for you to try and pressure me. <laughs> I'm not trying to pressure you. Now, come on. Here's the pen. Sign the check. Mm. You have no good reason not to. Well, in that case, I think I'll go out and consult my recipe book. Recipe? What are you talking about? So I can cook up a good reason. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes, I know, but is it always customary to issue the check to both the husband and the wife? <laughs> After all, I, I pay the premiums. Y yes, I, I understand, but as I've said, in, in view of... Hmm? Oh, 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 yes, of course, I didn't mean to take up so much of your, your time. Well, I, I appreciate your courtesy in, in the matter, and I'll call you right after lunch. Oh. Well, then, uh, later in the afternoon? Oh, I, I see. Uh, how long do you expect to be on vacation? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, well, uh, well, I, yes, I have to go now. Well, thank you very much, and uh, uh, have a good time. Okay. Oh, Hi. thank you. I bet you can't guess what I've been doing downtown. Uh, I, I can imagine. <laughs> Come on upstairs, and I'll show you. I know what you've been doing. Calling <laughs> the insurance company. Uh, oh, uh, what makes you so sure? Because I've been trying to phone home all morning. Well, were you trying to reach me about something important? Yes, I was. Uh, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Don't tell me you changed your mind and decided to endorse the check over to me. Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. Oh. I thought the whole thing over and decided that was the only fair thing to do. Uh, well, well, believe me, Harry, that was a very wise decision. I figured you'd think so. You just sign it right on the top there. No, here. Write it on this. Uh, uh, just as a point of curiosity, what made you change your mind? Uh, was it my presentation of the, the legal uh, aspects? Well, partly. I was trying to think of a solution to our problem. So I went down to the Emporium, and I bought this new winter coat. Oh. <laughs> uh, 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 yes, uh, uh, this is a, a beautiful coat, Harriet. Well, what's that got to do with solving our problem? Well, I made the decision to wit. Whence I bought the coat and charged it. Thence I endorsed the check to you. Hence, when the bill comes, you can pay it with a check. Do you see any holes in that? <laughs> no, uh, uh, none except the one in my head. <laughs> Let's go. We promised to do this yesterday. Boy, what a mess. Every time we go to a drive-in movie, you spill stuff all over the back of the car. What happened when they showed that baiting beauty contest in the newsreel? What's that got to do with it? I had my mouth full of popcorn, and I tried to whistle. <laughs> well, look at this. Popcorn, candy, ice cream, milk cartons. You're a regular human disposal. Well, see how much I would have eaten if it had been a double feature. Come on, you help clean up some of this stuff, too. Okay. Ouch. What's the matter? I don't know. I stuffed myself on something. Hey, look at this. Hey, it's Mom's pen. Yeah, when I got back here. I don't know. Well, I bet Pop will be happy. I'll say. If you'll be happy about a dollar's worth. Ricky, don't be so mercenary. Mercenary? Heck, who's being mercenary? You are. I am not. Besides, I don't even know what it means. Mercenary means you're always thinking about money. I am not. Never mind. Come on, let's show this to Pop. Just remember, 
remembrance is a reward. I found it. <laughs> wow, guess what we found? Guess what we found? Guess what I found? Okay, guess what Ricky found? <laughs> okay, what did you find? Mom's gold pin. Oh, how about that? That's wonderful. Harriet! Harriet! In case there's a reward, you know my address, Pa. <laughs> What's the trouble? Uh, look what Ricky found, your pin. Oh, how wonderful. Where did you find it? In the back of the car. Well, how about that? Good for you. I know sometimes in the lost and found columns, they offer rewards. <laughs> well, I wonder how it got in the back of the car. Maybe you dropped off one of Mom's dresses. Yes, it could have when I took them to the cleaners. In fact, they always mention a reward in the lost and found column. <laughs> well, okay, here's a dollar. Oh, gee, thanks, Pop. Don't forget your old pal. Who's that? Oh, me. Don't tell me you're going to let that money go to your head. Don't worry, it's not going to go to my head. It's going to go to my stomach. Be my guest at the ice cream store. Well, the pleasure's all Oh, looks like this is our lucky day. We got the pin back. Yep, and I got a new coat. We also got a nice little check from the insurance company. Well, wait a minute. What about the insurance company? What about them? Well, we'll have to tell them that we found the pin. Well, of course. Oh, I know, but don't you see? They'll want the check back. Well, give it to them, dear. You had it last. <laughs> That's just it. I, I can't uh, give them the, the check back because I was figuring on using the money to pay for the coat that uh, you bought. No, I'm sorry. You'll have to take the coat back so I can... Well, I can't check. do that, dear. I bought it on sale, and you can't return anything you buy on sale. What kind of a, a deal is that? Well, you've always told me to shop carefully. Come on, phone the insurance well, company. I, well, there, there's uh, nothing I can tell them. I mean, I, I don't have any... Oh, I'm sure you'll come to some agreement. Well, uh, I, I mean, uh, I can't say anything to them. I, I don't have a case of any sort. Well, you've had law training, dear. Even if you don't win, you have the satisfaction of knowing you lost legally. <laughs> I, I know you meant that as a compliment, but... Somehow, in my present mental condition, I, I can't seem to uh, appreciate it. Come on, phone the insurance company. I, I still don't know what I'm going to tell them. You know that number pretty well. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I've been phoning them all morning. I, I ought to. Uh, would you connect me with the claims department, please? They've probably had this happen to them before. Well, I'm sure they have. People try to defraud insurance companies all the time. Claims department. Matthews speaking. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Matthews, uh, this is Ozzie Nelson. Uh, I, I, I've got good news. Oh, you finally got your wife to sign the check? <laughs> uh, yes, but this is really good news. Uh, we found the pin, and I'll uh, send it right over to you. Well, that's... Uh, just a minute, Mr. Nelson. We don't want the pin. But, but you've already sent the check for it, so, so it's yours. Now, what would Trans Northern Insurance do with your pin? wouldn't look good on any of our executives. <laughs> but, but, but it's your pin. I mean, you paid for it. No, Mr. Nelson. You paid for it. We insured it. I'm glad you got it back. Just return our check, please. Well, uh, no, uh, see, uh, uh, I, 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 I want to explain. See, uh, a, a rather, <laughs> you might say, a rather humorous thing has happened over here. I should imagine what? you'd be very happy about this. I remember you said the pin had great sentimental value. Well, uh, yes, yes, that's true. And our check has great sentimental value to us. <laughs> Goodbye, no, Mr. Nelson. No, 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 just a moment, Mr. Matthews. You see, uh, Mr. Matthews? Mm. I'm just getting your checkbook. I'll need a check for $125 for my new coat. I know you won't believe it, but I'm so glad we found my pin. Well, uh, your pin? No, no, we're not. Well, of course. You said yourself you gave me the pin, and the pin was mine. And when I lost the pin, the check was yours, and you got it. Now that we found the pin, the pin is mine. Well, I know, but what about the coat? Oh, well, that's mine, too. And thank you very much, dear. <laughs> I paid $125 for the pin originally. And now you want me to give you $125 to, to pay for the coat, and I have to give $125 to the insurance company. If you lose anything else of value, I'll go bankrupt. Well, dear, those are the chances you take when you buy insurance. <laughs> now, that doesn't make any sense at all. I, I think I'll go out and ask Thorny what he thinks about all this expensive confusion. <laughs> 
I'm glad you think it's so funny. Oh, now, Oz, you should always try to see the humorous side of things. I bet you wouldn't laugh if this had happened to you. Of course not. Then it wouldn't be humorous anymore. <laughs> Let's look at this thing logically. I gave Harriet a pin, right? Right. She lost it, right? Right. The insurance company gave us a check, so the check belongs to me, right? Wrong. <laughs> well, you don't expect me to pay for the same pin twice. I'm not supposed to do that. Oz, when you're married, you're supposed to do a lot of things you're not supposed to do. <laughs> now, why don't you just give Harriet the pin and take your loss like a man? Figure you've been to Las Vegas. <laughs> but I haven't been to Las Vegas. I got cleaned out right here at home. I'll tell you what, Oz. Why don't you stay up all night under a sun lamp? I'll keep the dice rattling, I'll blow smoke in your face, step on your shoes, spill drinks all over your suit, and you'll never know the difference. <laughs> That's no solution. Well, I've tried to help you, but you refuse to take my advice. I say you should give Harriet the pin and... Yes, yes, I know what you say. However, that's only your opinion. Well, didn't you come out here to get my opinion? Well, you, you can't settle anything like this with just one opinion. I think I'll get several opinions before I make up my mind. Okay, Oz. And if everybody feels the same way you do... You'll give Harriet the pin? No, I'll go get some more opinions. <laughs> This coat, don't you, dear? Oh, uh, yeah, it, it, it's fine. Well, you should show more enthusiasm. After all, you did pay for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm very aware of that. Uh, Harry, I've been thinking this whole thing over, and, and I've decided that you should uh, keep the pin. I want you to have it. After all, I gave it to you for our anniversary. Oh, well, thank you, dear. And since you've been so nice about giving the pin back to me and buying this coat, I have a little surprise for you. You bought a new hat. <laughs> A check made out to me by you for $125. I don't get it. I sold the pin. You, you, you sold the pin, but, but I, I just gave it to you. I, I, who did you sell it to? Oh, you'll die when I tell you. Well, no, no, you can tell me. After all, I'm sort of conditioned to surprises I've been getting all day long. Uh, who bought it from you? Well, Mr. Matthews of the Trans Northern Insurance Company. Oh. He called a while ago and asked if the pin was for sale. Well, uh, why does he want it? He's going to give it to his wife for their 13th anniversary. Oh, is their 13th anniversary coming up? Well, no, not yet, but since the company appraised the pin for $150, he decided it was such a bargain that he'd buy it and put it away for a while. Now, oh. aren't you happy? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think it was a good deal for you to sell it, especially since you didn't wear it very much. I can't help but think of the, the big kick I got, though, and when I went in and, and picked it out. You know, I, I designed it in a little round pin with a 13 in the, in the middle. After all, what could be more appropriate for our 13th anniversary? Almost anything. You gave it to me on our 14th anniversary. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. You mean all this time I've been one year behind on our anniversaries? Yeah. Well, then... The last anniversary was really our 18th. That's right. Well, by golly, this explains it. What? Well, why it seems so strange to me that David was 17. <laughs> Scrambled eggs or some coffee or something? No, 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 thanks. Uh, you know, I've been thinking over this story of yours, and frankly, I find it a little hard to believe. In what way? Well, Oz, how can a man forget how many years he's been married? Oh, it can happen, Thorny. Well, not to me. We've got a system. Captain worked it out when we were first married. Well, I'd like to hear about it. Well, it's very simple, Oz. You see, besides giving Catherine an anniversary present, I also give her a dollar for each year we've been married. Naturally, she makes sure I know which anniversary it is. Oh, say, say, that, that, that's okay. Pretty sly, huh? Yeah, uh, how many years uh, have you been married? Well, according to Catherine, 48. <laughs> 